we're going to be looking at x-rays, how they are produced and how they interact with matter. X-rays have very short wavelengths and they're produced from the large deceleration of high energy electrons when they hit a metal surface. The large deceleration of the electrons results in a loss in kinetic energy and this kinetic energy is transformed into the X-ray photons and heat. But actually 99% of the energy is in the form of heat and only 1% is in the form of X-rays. This diagram is showing you an X-ray tube. A large current in the cathode filament causes it to heat up and this hot cathode filament releases electrons and this process is known as thermionic emission. Thermi meaning heat and the ionic emission is the electrons that are being emitted from the filament. The electrons are then accelerated through a very large potential difference to a tungsten anode where at the anode the electrons undergo a very large deceleration and hence x-rays are produced. Because a lot of heat is produced the tungsten anode is rotated so that the area the electrons collide with constantly changes thus allowing time for that area to cool down by radiating heat to its surroundings. X-rays interact with matter via these three processes. The photoelectric effect, an X-ray photon is absorbed by an atomic electron, transferring all its energy to the electron, which then allows it to escape the atom. Energy is conserved in this process, where HF is the photon energy of the X-ray. Phi represents the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. And the remaining energy is, appears as the kinetic energy of the emitted electron. The photon energy is actually much, much greater than the energy needed to remove the electron from the atom. And so most of the photon energy appears as the kinetic energy of the electron. In the Compton effect, an X-ray photon collides with an atomic electron, where this electron gains some energy from the X-ray photon and is ejected from the atom, the photon, because it's lost some energy, scatters, changes direction, but it has a longer wavelength or a higher frequency than the original X-ray photon. So again, energy must be conserved in this process. So you have the original photon energy of the incident x-ray photon. Phi is representing the energy needed to remove an electron from the atom. The ejected electron has some kinetic energy but you also have the scattered photon, x-ray photon, which has a lower frequency or a longer wavelength because it has less energy compared to the original x-ray photon. The photon has to scatter in order to conserve momentum. So that is the total momentum after the collision must equal the total momentum before the collision. Pair production occurs when an x-ray photon strikes an atomic nucleus and it disappears to create an electron and positron pair. So this process is an example where energy is converting into mass to produce the electron and positron pair. So energy must be conserved in this process. 
So we have our original photon energy, which is converted into mass energy to produce our electron and positron pair. And any remaining energy is converted into kinetic energy. And this kinetic energy is divided equally between the electron and the positron. Also, this process must conserve momentum. So the total momentum after should equal the total momentum before. Intensity is defined as the amount of energy arriving per unit area per unit time. And the intensity of an X-ray beam from a point source obeys an inverse square law with distance. So that is, if the distance is doubled, you'll have quarter of the intensity of an X-ray beam. For a collimated X-ray beam, so this is a parallel beam of X-rays, then the intensity will remain constant if in air. However, due to the fact that X-rays interact with matter, the intensity of a collimated X-ray beam varies exponentially with the thickness of the matter. So I is the intensity of the collimated X-ray beam after passing through thickness X and I naught represents the initial intensity of the collimated X-ray beam. Mu is the linear attenuation coefficient for the medium through which the X-rays are travelling through and its unit is per metre because an exponential does not have units and x is measured in metres. Mu gives an indicator of how much x-rays are absorbed in matter. So the larger the value, the greater the absorption of x-rays in matter. And because the intensity varies exponentially with thickness x, an exponential property is the constant ratio property. So for equal increases in the thickness or distance x, the intensity falls by the same ratio. The half value thickness, which equals the natural log of 2 divided by the linear attenuation coefficient, represents the distance or thickness of medium required to reduce the intensity of the X-ray beam to half. So here you can see that the linear attenuation coefficient for bone is greater than that for soft tissue. And so the half value thickness for bone is much shorter. Here is the proof of the half value thickness equation and it's a similar proof to the half life equation for radioactive decay where the half life equals the natural log of 2 divided by the decay constant.